In this video, we're going to discuss Kohlberg's stages of moral development, and you're going to be able to assess where you fall in Kohlberg's stages, how advanced your moral thinking is, according to Kohlberg. But before I say anything more, I want to present you with the Heinz Dilemma. I'm going to read it to you, it's a little bit wordy, sorry about that, but I really encourage you to think about your answer to the question at the end of this paragraph. So let me read you the situation, the dilemma, and you think about your response. In Europe, a woman was near death from a special kind of cancer. There was one drug that the doctors thought might save her. It was a form of radium that a druggist in the same town had recently discovered. The drug was expensive to make, but the druggist was charging 10 times what the drug cost him to make. He paid $200 for the radium and charged $2,000 for a small dose of the drug. The sick woman's husband, Heinz, went to everyone he knew to borrow the money but he could only get together about $1,000, which is half of what it cost. He told the druggist that his wife was dying and asked him to sell it cheaper or let him pay it later. But the druggist said, no, I discovered the drug and I'm gonna make money from it. So Heinz got desperate and broke into the man's store to steal the drug for his wife. All right, here's the key question. Should the husband have done that? I encourage you to think about your response to this question and Importantly, think about your reasoning behind it. So give me a yes or a no and tell me why you think that. Why do you think he should have stolen the, uh, or at least it was right for him to steal the drug for his wife, or why do you think it was wrong for him to steal the drug for his wife? If you want to write it down in the comments of this video, I would be really interested to see what you think at this point before any spoilers of what's next. Um, but at the very least, even if you don't comment, think about to yourself how you would respond. Okay. And if you're, if you're writing or thinking about it or you want more time, pause it because I'm going to progress right now. Okay, so these are called Kohlberg's moral stages of development, right? So this is based on Lawrence Kohlberg's work, who is uh, sadly also no longer with us. But the key thing behind um, the way he categorized people's moral reasoning abilities on the basis of their responses to the Heinz dilemma and other dilemmas like it is that he didn't care whether people say yes or no. Rather, he cared about the reasoning behind their answer. So whether you said, yes, he should have stolen or no, he shouldn't have, it actually doesn't matter. What categorizes you in different areas within his sort of categorization system, the three stages with levels within those stages, I'll get to all of that very soon. Uh, it depends on your reasoning behind that. So depending on your reasoning, you can be in one of three stages. And within each stage, as I alluded to, is two different levels, are two different levels. And again, in total, that means there are six different levels. So I encourage you, think of how you responded to the Heinz Dilemma and figure out which of the six levels you fall into. I will mention that uh, Kohlberg did this with people of all ages, so you can assess as an adult where you fall. You can uh, find a child or an adolescent if you have you know, a son or a nephew or, or whatever. Uh, you can tell the Heinz Dilemma to them and ask them the same question and see where they fall as well. Okay, so let me walk you through the different stages and the levels within each stage just to make it very clear. Again, three stages, two levels within each stage, six levels total. Starting with stage one, pre-conventional morality. Pre-conventional meaning sort of basic, right? We're at the lower levels here. So level one, the very most basic form of moral reasoning abilities you can have according to Kohlberg, obedience and punishment. So for people who are of level one morality, behavior is driven by avoiding punishment. So think back to the Heinz dilemma. Someone might say no, if they're, again, in this level, they might say, no, Heinz should not have stolen uh, the drug for his wife because he might go to jail as a result, right? He might be punished um, and he doesn't want that. That's a bad thing, right? Next, we have level two morality. This is called individual interest because for people who are of this level, behavior is driven by self-interest and rewards. So in this case, what do you think somebody who has the individual interest level uh, might say about the Heinz dilemma. Well, they might say, yes, he should steal the drug because he wants to get his wife back, right? That's in his best interest to do, right? It might hurt the druggist, whatever. Uh, it's the most rewarding for him to steal the drug because he uh, will save his wife and that's what he wants. Now we get to stage two morality, which is conventional morality. Again, think of what conventional means. This means most people fall in stage two. Most people are right here. So we've already talked about pre-conventional morality, 
Now we're talking about conventional morality. What do you think comes uh, next, right? Post-conventional morality. But before we get ahead of ourselves, let me tell you about the two levels within conventional morality. So first we have the interpersonal level. For people who are of level three overall, right, this is the first level of conventional morality, but if you're just thinking one through six, we already talked about level one and level two, now we're on to level three. The interpersonal level is uh, essentially where you have behavior driven by social approval. So think about the Heinz dilemma. It could go either way. They could say, yes, he should have stolen it, or no, he shouldn't have, but again, the reasoning matters the most. So somebody of level three morality might say, no, he shouldn't steal the drug because most people view stealing as bad and people might look down on him for doing it. Or they might say, yes, he should steal the drug because even though stealing is bad, letting your wife die is worse when you should have done something about it and people will look down on you for that. So again, it's all about social approval. These are the kind of people who wash their hands after using the bathroom only when somebody else is in the bathroom with them, right? In a public restroom, at home alone, they're not washing their hands. That's level three morality here. If you want to moralize washing your hands, I guess. Level four is called authority. So here, again, we're still in conventional morality, but behavior is driven by obeying authority and conforming to social norms. So people who are in level four uh, morality here might say, uh, you know, okay, authority, that's the government. Uh, the government says don't steal, it's illegal to steal. Uh, the norm is that it's not okay to steal, so Heinz shouldn't have stolen. Now let's get to post-conventional morality. Again, post-conventional meaning not everyone makes it here. This is uh, the cream of the crop here. So let's talk about level five, which is level five overall, the first level of post-conventional morality, social contract. Uh, this is where behavior is driven by a balance of social order and individual rights. So think about what this means and how somebody in the social contract level might respond to the Heinz dilemma. So social order. So they might talk about how, you know, rules and regulations and laws are there for a reason. And if everybody stole and everybody committed a crime whenever they thought they had a reason to, whenever they thought they had a legitimate reason to, well, everybody would be committing crimes and society would just sort of self-destruct, right? So that's social contract. So the idea is, yes, you recognize the individual rights of the person who wants his wife to live, but also the person who invented the drug right? And it's his right uh, to that drug and to use it however he wants. And finally, we get to level six. Very few people make it this far. So if you were thinking on this level, congratulations, you're one of a few. Universal ethics. So here, behavior is driven by internal moral principles. So what does this mean? Okay, I have a moral principle that it's wrong to steal. I have another moral principle that people have the right to live and be healthy, right? So universal ethics involves weighing these two conflicting moral principles in this dilemma. So your reasoning would essentially reflect the idea of, okay, well, yes, it was wrong to steal. However, his wife's right to live is far more important than the druggist's right to make more money or the druggist's right to his property, right? So the, the importance of life is essentially at a higher level of the importance of property, and therefore, yes, he should have stolen the drug. 